This is an ABC News special report. And good afternoon. I'm Tom Yamas at ABC News headquarters in New York, and we're coming on the air with breaking news. President much. Trump is at a bill signing at the White House, but the big news, his bombshell announcement like to earlier begin today, the June 12th summit in Singapore with North Korea's Kim Jong-un is off. Let's listen in. Of North Korea, I have decided to terminate the planned summit in Singapore on June 12th. Well, many things can happen, and a great opportunity lies ahead, potentially. I believe that this is a tremendous setback for North Korea and, indeed, a setback for the world. I've spoken to General Mattis and the Joint Chiefs of Staff and our military, which is by far the most powerful anywhere in the world, that has been greatly enhanced recently, as you all know, is ready if necessary. Likewise, I have spoken to South Korea and Japan, and they are not only ready should foolish or reckless acts be taken by North Korea, but they are willing to shoulder much of the cost of any financial burden, any of the costs associated by the United States in operations if such an unfortunate situation is forced upon us. Hopefully, positive things will be taking place with respect to the future of North Korea. But if they don't, we are more ready than we have ever been before. North Korea has the opportunity to end decades of poverty and oppression by following the path of denuclearization and joining the community of nations. And I hope that Kim Jong-un will ultimately do what is right, not only for himself, but perhaps, most importantly, what's right for his people, who are suffering greatly and needlessly. All of the Korean people, North and South, deserve to be able to live together in harmony, prosperity, and peace. That bright and beautiful future can only happen when the threat of nuclear weapons is removed. No way it can happen otherwise. If and when Kim Jong-un chooses to engage in constructive dialogue and actions, I am waiting. In the meantime, our very strong sanctions, by far the strongest sanctions ever imposed, and maximum pressure campaign will continue as it has been continuing. But no matter what happens and what we do, we will never, ever compromise the safety and security of the United States of America. I want to make that statement. Feel very, very strongly about it. Our military, as you know, has been greatly enhanced. We'll soon be at a level that it's never been before. Our approval of $700 billion this year and $716 billion dollars next year, largely due to the help of a lot of the people with me today and standing right here. We appreciate. But we had to do that for our military, and we've done it. And hopefully, everything's going to work out well with North Korea. And a lot of things can happen, including the fact that perhaps, and would wait, it's possible that the existing summit could take place, or a summit at some later date. Nobody should be anxious. We have to get it right. Okay. With that being said, we have something else, which I have to tell you, all of you, Chairman, Mike, and everybody, uh, it was a big deal until this came up. <laughs> I don't know. Where's Mike Crapo? Where are you? Mike, congrats. Congratulations, you did a great job, but it doesn't seem so important now. I don't know. 
But it is important. It's incredible. We've just been listening to the President Trump at the White House today announcing why he decided to call off his summit, the June 12th summit in Singapore, with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. Also talking tough as well, telling Kim Jong-un that the military is ready, the United States military is ready, that a great opportunity possibly lies ahead, potentially. But then also saying we are more ready than we have ever been, talking about the military. This is from a letter he sent Kim Jong-un earlier today. He says, sadly, based on the tremendous anger and open hostility displayed in your most recent statement, I feel it is inappropriate at this time to have this long planned meeting canceled. I want to go to our senior White House correspondent, Cecilia Vega. And Cecilia, we've had some serious whiplash just, just today, this morning, on Fox News. We heard an interview that was taped yesterday where the president signaled the meeting was still on. And then today at 945, that breaking news, the meeting was off. What happened? Well, in some ways, Tom, this was no surprise. Uh, they, they've been on shaky ground about this meeting for uh, a couple of weeks now. Uh, the president in the last few days, as you just laid out, has been back and forth on whether or not this meeting would actually take place. Uh, the, the president is not happy with the language that North Korea used, uh, calling Vice President Pence recently ignorant and stupid. He called him a political dummy for these comments that the vice president made uh, about what would happen to Kim Jong-un, essentially saying that if he doesn't make a deal with the U.S., that he might end up in fact dead uh, so so there was offense taken to that uh, you saw you read that word tremendous anger and open hostility is the way this White House is describing Kim Jong-un right now and the message coming from North Korea but let's go back to what President Trump just said right here in the White House right now this was not just strong language this will be interpreted I think by many in this city and perhaps around the world as perhaps a threat uh, meeting North Korea with its own rhetoric about military use uh, saying that he spoke to General Mattis the defense secretary and the joint chiefs today uh, by far he's uh, saying that our military is by far the most powerful military in the world quote they are ready should foolish or reckless acts be taken uh, that is very strong language uh, and we will wait to see how North Korea reacts to that you're right that the president did say that there is potential for a meeting to still happen but Tom I've got to say uh, I think universally here in this town, the sentiment is, is questionable as to whether that will actually go forward. That is so true, Cecilia. I want to bring in Terry Moran, our chief foreign correspondent. And Terry, what set the North Koreans off apparently was the Trump administration mentioning the Libyan model. Vice President Mike Pence, as well as National Security Advisor John Bolton. And North Korea's response, as Cecilia laid out, was a, quote, nuclear to nuclear showdown if we don't have a meeting. Also calling Vice President Mike Pence a political dummy. Give us some of the backstory here with the Libyan model, why that was such a red flag for the North Koreans. Well, both uh, Vice President Pence and National Security Advisor John Bolton raised the Libya model as, as the template for a potential North Korea deal. That would be problematic for Kim Jong-un because of the following. Muammar Gaddafi gave up all his nuclear weapons, all of his nuclear programs. Now, he didn't have much of a nuclear program, but it was in the process. And in 2003, he gave it all up right after seeing the United States sweep through Iraq. He was worried. Uh, and then eight years later, he ended up overthrown, dragged from a drainage ditch, beaten by a mob, and shot. And essentially, Pence and Bolton are saying, well, you've got to take that deal. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, that alarmed uh, the uh, North Korean regime and Kim and was insulted by it. So the rhetoric went up, and they uh, went back to square one. We've seen this movie before. North Korea in the past has dismantled some nuclear facilities, as they did today, has cut a deal with uh, various American presidents, and then gone back as soon as they get some concessions, as soon as they get the war talk backed off some, so they get some breathing room, a better relationship with China. Uh, this is something that Kim Jong-un has, has learned from his father, uh, and, and clearly uh, it, it was the trigger what Vice President Pence said about Libya, but he was also never clear about what denuclearization actually meant. Would he actually give up all of his nuclear weapons? And that remains the key question for him and for President Trump. If he wants a deal, will he live with something short of complete, irreversible, verifiable denuclearization? All right, Terry, our thanks to you. Just to recap, President Trump announcing he has canceled the June 12th summit with Kim Jong-un in Singapore, saying now is not a time to be anxious, but also saying our military is ready. We will have much more on this, including real-time updates on abcnews.com. You can download the ABC News app and a full wrap-up tonight with new reporting on World News Tonight. I'm Tom Yamas in New York. We now return to regularly scheduled programming. This has been a special report from ABC News.